Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the death toll after a fatal train collision in Greece continues to rise. And members of the community speak about the legacy Claude Jacobs left behind in the crossroads. The jury in the Alex Murdoch trial visited the property where the double murders took place. As moisture moves in, that's right, looking at some more fog, and then we're going to see a cool down very soon. We'll talk all about that and more. Rob Elementary students and parents of Uvalde victims rally in Austin for gun reform. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I'm James Munoz. And I'm Karina Garcia. A sheriff's office on Florida's Space Coast is investigating the deaths of four people found inside a county home. Authorities have not said how they died, nor have they released the victim's identities. The sheriff did say one of them was a child. Our victims who we are not going to identify at this time are three females and one male. One of our female victims has been determined to be a juvenile. There were also two children found inside the home who were not hurt. Police say the scene was horrific and do not believe the incident was random, and they say there is no threat to the public. Emergency workers searching through flattened, burned out carriages for survivors and bodies after a passenger train and freight train collided in central Greece. The collision happened just before midnight. Tuesday, killing at least 43 people. The transport minister resigned Wednesday, believing it was his duty to step down. The cause of the crash not immediately clear, but the station master at the train's last stop was arrested. Survivors said the impact threw several passengers into the ceilings and through the windows of the train cars. Services for Claude Jacobs begin Sunday, March 5th with a visitation from 4 to 6 p.m. at St. Joseph Catholic Church, 401 Orth Street in Yoakum. A rosary follows at 6 p.m. Now the funeral for Jacobs will take place Monday, March 6th at 10 a.m. at Our Lady of Victory Catholic Church located 1311 Mesquite Lane in Victoria. A reception will follow the Mass. Claude Jacobs was a leader in Victoria and the area. He touched many lives. He died Monday morning at the age of 80. Now friends and family share a few words on the legacy he left behind. He really lost a good man today. Claude Jacobs, well-known, well-respected, and well-loved in the Crossroads community. Jacobs, a native of Yoakum, was known for his philanthropist work in the area, his dedication towards helping those in need, and most notably, the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch. The origins of the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch date back to the 1960s, when Jacobs and others provided shelter and care for five children whose parents could not. Over the years, Jacob's humble intentions developed into the now-established Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch, which has taken care of over 600 abused, abandoned, or neglected children across the South Texas region. It's all about neighbor helping neighbor, and that's something that describes Mr. Jacob in his heart. And that's what Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch was. But his philanthropist efforts did not stop there. Jacobs jump started the annual Celebrity Golf Tournament, bringing in stars from both the sports and music industry. This tournament alone has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch. There's not an inch, a square inch of the 40 acres of Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch that do not have Claude Jacobs fingerprints on it. Both Jacobs and his wife, Mary Virginia, recognized and valued the importance of education. So when UHV announced it was starting its athletics program, the couple started an endowment fund for it. And in March of 2022, Jacobs created and donated $25,000 to a UHV scholarship for nursing students, honoring his wife. It's going to take a lot of people to step up and replace the efforts that one man and Claude Jacobs was doing in this community because he did a lot and a lot that maybe people don't even realize. And those who knew Jacobs described him as giving, passionate, and kind. If you would like to honor the memory of Claude Jacobs, you can send a donation to the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch, P.O. Box 90, Yoakum, Texas 77995, or donate on the website seen on your screen. And this brings us to your viewer poll this afternoon. Scan that QR code on your screen to participate. Have you supported the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch in the past? Yes or no? We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate, and we will have an update on 25 News Now at 6.
Now, the jury in the Alex Murdoch trial toured his South Carolina home and property today to see where his wife and son were murdered. Media members were also given the opportunity to view portions of the home, including the barn and dog kennel. It was inside the feed room of the kennel where Maggie and Paul Murdoch were killed. Defense attorneys requested the visit to give the jurors a better sense of the space where the victims were killed. Alex Murdoch is accused of both murders and he claims he did not harm his wife or son. And after an exhaustive investigation, there is only one person who had the motive, who had the means, who had the opportunity to commit these crimes, and also whose guilty conduct after these crimes betrays him. The jury is also hearing closing arguments in the case today. All right, I didn't get a chance to step outside at all today, no, but is it spring, a little cloudy? A little cloudy? A little Howard, dark. what's going on out there? Uh, another almost summer-like day. We had some uh, nice warm temperatures out there, but here's what's going on once again. We are looking at fog, moisture pushing in from the Gulf, going to move inland. That could bring our, te our bring our that could bring our visibilities down once again to a quarter of a mile or less. We warmed up into the 80s again today. That's going to continue through tomorrow, but. We do have another boundary headed our way. That's going to knock our temperatures down. That could bring us some rain showers as well. We'll talk more about it coming up. James, Karina. Howie, thank you. Families and survivors of the Robb Elementary School shooting led a march in Austin calling for new gun restrictions. One of the youngest demonstrators with a message for Governor Abbott. As soon as we got to our class, we heard the gunshots. He wobbled my... He wobbled my... The memories of the day that changed her life are hard for 10 year old Caitlin Gonzalez to share. The grief and fear have a lasting impact. He shot at my door and a bullet went over my head. I, heard, I remember hearing my best friend's scream and I remember hugging her that morning. Caitlin lost her friends Jackie Cáceres and Eliana Torres. Standing with their families at the Capitol Tuesday, she called on Governor Greg Abbott to change gun laws. I shouldn't have to be here right now, but I am because my friends don't have a voice no more. Greg Abbott's done nothing to protect me or my friends. Caitlin and the other families from Uvalde took their fight inside to the lawmakers' offices directly. It's a fight Rosiana Stone has been in for almost five years since the Santa Fe High School shooting took her son, Chris. He's a hero in his own skin. He saved seven people that day, and I know that if he had the chance, he'd do it all over. Stone says she's heartbroken and angry that more wasn't done after the Santa Fe shooting to keep the Rob shooting from happening. We just need changes, any kind of changes, anything better than nothing. We're here to tell this governor to beg this governor and others like him to do something. The governor's office did not respond to a request for comment. In October, he said raising the age to buy a semi-automatic weapon is unconstitutional. Florida's governor, though, did just that after the Parkland mass shooting left 17 people dead. Just a short while ago, people gathered at the monument at the Presidio La Bahia in Goliad. The one hour ceremony started at 3.30. This is the posting of 225 flags in honor of Texas heroes. 25 News Now weekend anchor Adam Seibel is there and we'll have more on 25 News Now at 10. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca this week. Grace Church and the Port Lavaca Lions Club served pancakes and raised money Tuesday. The principal for Our Lady of the Gulf of Catholic School becomes a science teacher and the Calhoun County Quilt Guild held their third quilt show after being postponed due to the pandemic. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. Stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. A University of Georgia football player facing reckless driving charges in a double fatal car crash in January. Also ahead, Ohio's governor visited the train derailment site in East Palestine today. You can't do this alone. Not an investigation of this scope. We're partners. Her death is part of a pattern. Another missing murdered indigenous woman. This is about a very broken system. It's about corruption. The truth matters. We know who killed Gloria. Prove it.
to all the Chevy Silverado owners out there, the adventurers, and the doers. Thank you for making Chevy Silverado the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all Silverado 1500 pickups and get $1,000 cash allowance on this Silverado with a turbo high output engine. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter was charged with reckless driving and racing in conjunction with the crash which killed offense and lineman Devin Willock and staff member Chandler LaCroix on January 15th. Authorities issued an arrest warrant claiming Carter was racing his UV against LaCroix. Investigators say speed and alcohol were believed to be a factor in the crash. A report found both drivers had a blood alcohol concentration more than twice Georgia's legal limit. The Ohio governor and his wife were in East Palestine today visiting the site of last month's toxic train derailment. The visit comes amid anxiety of reported rashes and headaches, which could be tied to the Norfolk Southern train wreck. The EPA is increasing air quality testing while cleanup of the waste under the train was expected to start today. The governor's office says his agenda also includes stops at two contaminated waterways for updates on water testing and sediment washing. Norfolk Southern Railroad CEO Alan Shaw is expected to testify before a Senate committee about the Ohio train derailment next week. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will call on Shaw to appear before the Senate's Environment and Public Works Committee. While it's not clear if Shaw will agree to testify, Schumer's request comes as Democrats now have subpoena power in the Senate. Republicans are gearing up for an investigation in the House aimed directly at the Biden administration's response to the crisis. The CDC reports a third of all U.S. adults say they usually get less than the recommended amount of sleep each night. Many turn to those melatonin supplements for health. But health experts say there are some things to consider before taking them. It's called the sleep hormone. Melatonin helps promote sleepiness in our brains, but for some, sleep doesn't come easy. Over-the-counter melatonins uh, are products that people are increasingly reaching to. But before you reach for those melatonin supplements, Dr. Nancy Foldberry Schaefer, director of the Cleveland Clinic Sleep Disorder Center, says to know what's causing your sleep problems. There could be underlying issues that need to be addressed. She says those pills have proven to be effective for conditions like circadian rhythm disorders, but may not help all sleep issues. While there's some subjective evidence that melatonin can help people with insomnia, there's much less objective evidence that melatonin works well to treat insomnia. Because the supplements are offered in a variety of dosages, she says the right one may vary from person to person. And if the supplements are taken to treat a sleep disorder, they also need to be appropriately timed. People who take melatonin in the middle of the night or take a second dose of melatonin several hours after bedtime will actually see a disturbance in sleep and may actually see that their sleep timing becomes more delayed. That's why she says it's best to talk to your doctor. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Attorney General Garland testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee today. He did not comment specifically on the DOJ's reported investigation into Ticketmaster, instead only making generic comments about industries lacking competition. Ticketmaster recently came under fire when it, when it made headlines for failing to process orders for Taylor Swift's upcoming concert. Millions of fans were unable to buy tickets and were without tickets even after buying them. We know, quote, all too well, close quote, uh, the importance of competition in this industry uh, as in all other industries. Um, um, and so you can be confident that in all of our work, uh, we approach it with an understanding uh, that highly concentrated industries are a problem for competition. 
Garland noted the DOJ does not comment on antitrust investigations until they reach what he called an overt stage. President Biden mentioned Ticketmaster as a target of proposed legislation to regulate junk fees. Here are some top headlines you can read in the Quero record this week. A Nigerian national living in Maryland taken into custody facing felony charges in that DeWitt County cybercrime. The DeWitt County auditor earns a national honor and the 74th annual Quero Livestock Show underway. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Moisture is going to bring some fog. A cold front is going to bring cooler temperatures and some rain. We'll talk more about it straight ahead. Are you on Medicaid and in need of bladder control and incontinence products? Then stay tuned for a free offer from Active Style. Can Medicaid help me with bladder control products? At Active Style, we understand your needs and offer convenient home delivery of incontinence products for children and adults. And they may be available at no cost to you if you're Medicaid eligible. When you call a personal consultant, someone like me will help you find the best bladder control supplies for you. Our products have a super absorbent core that locks away wetness to keep you dry. And if the fit's not right, we'll send different products until you're completely satisfied. Plus, every order ships free right to your door in discreet boxes. Active Style is a lifesaver. If you're on Medicaid, call now for your free sample. Active Style is the easy, convenient way to get incontinence supplies shipped discreetly to your door at no cost to you. Call 1-800-805-8567. Kids don't even know what they want for dinner, let alone what gender they are. Detransitioning. She had to go through the process of detransitioning back from being a male to a female. Is this a growing phenomenon? I've heard of some people saying that being trans is trendy. It's something that people think is cool. The number one reason for detransition is because transphobia. But I am trans. How am I transphobic? All new Dr. Phil. All right, we'll start off in Quero. Yeah, a lot of clouds today. Moisture moving in. We do have high pressure controlling the atmosphere, but we also have that moisture from the Gulf pushing in, bringing a little bit of that cloud cover, but also bringing a little bit of that warm weather. So 84 degrees today. Record back in 1975 was 89, but still, again, more than 10 degrees above average. A nice start to March. Today is March 1st. Uh, spring on the way in a couple of weeks, two and a half weeks, or three weeks. Uh, so future visibility is that moisture continues to push in from the Gulf. That's right. Here we're looking at some areas of fog, visibilities getting taken down. Now we have a little bit of some uh, breezes here and there, but hey, it doesn't look to be enough because we're looking at some visibilities getting taken down to a quarter of a mile or less. So again, you want to drive on the safe side, on the slow side, we don't want any problems. All right, future temperatures. Again, we're in the mid 80s. This looks to go right through tomorrow on Thursday, but then things start to change because Thursday night into Friday, we'll start to see that cooler air drop down. You'll see the note, the difference in a second. Here we go, into the 50s. Look at that. So Friday, staying on the cooler side. But then, just like that, we'll see a return flow out of the Gulf of that warm moisture, and we'll start to warm up after Friday and into the weekend. And then, hey, we're headed back into the 80s again eventually after uh, seeing some days in the 70s. All right, here's our dew points. Look at this rebound after that cold front uh, came through the other day back into the 70s. Yeah, that humid, your hair drying out feeling, that is for real, because look at these dew points, these humidity levels, these moisture levels on the high side, but these will get knocked down with frontal passage with that cold front pushing through South Texas tomorrow evening. All right, here's our winds. Yeah, we're gusty on the coast in that 30 mile per hour range. Move inland, yeah, 20 mile per hour winds. So these winds will control the fog a little bit, but not strong enough to completely scour it out. Again, looking at some visibilities getting taken down. So we're seeing that moisture push in, looking at all that cloud cover. But what's going to happen then? 
That's right, a boundary headed our way. All this moisture out in front of that boundary, that could help produce some showers. Look what happens here. So yeah, maybe even some thunderstorms along this boundary. We're looking at the most severe weather off to the northeast. Sometimes, or a lot of times, it doesn't make its way all the way down to South Texas, but hey, we're gonna keep an eye on it. There's a possibility that that does happen, but after that front does push through with the rain and the winds, yes, we're gonna drop down. We'll see some temperatures in the 60s for highs in the low and lows in the 40s, so yes. And then eventually that high is gonna move all the way off to the east and allow this Gulf flow to return again and we'll start to warm up. Here's a look at our showers. Again, opposing forces keeping rain away, but hey, as that boundary comes through tomorrow, look what happens. We're gonna see some rain with this boundary. Is there gonna be enough lift, enough stored energy from the sun and upper, wet, wet, upper level dynamics? And yeah, we can see some showers with this boundary. Then we clear off and we dry off. All right, here's our marine forecast. Here is what we're looking at. Okay, seas five to seven, occasionally up to nine. That'll be small craft advisory. Please be careful out there. So 70s in the evening, overnight dropping down to just 69. Again, you saw that fog. That fog will be there in the morning as well. But look at that, 30 mile per hour winds up to 84 degrees. And then Quero, we got days in the 80s, cooling down into the 80s with sunshine later on before a nice little warm up. Then in Port Lavaca, look at this, mostly 80s after we get knocked down into the 70s for a couple days. And again, as that boundary comes through, okay, not as bad, 84 down to 70. Actually, that's we're getting knocked down into some beautiful, beautiful weather conditions. Later on in the week, though, we do warm up again. For more weather news and sports, you got our app. That's at CrossroadsToday.com. That is free with any Android and iPhone. James Karina. All right, Howie, thank you. I want to say Karina is hosting Community Crossroads this That's weekend. Right. She'll mm -hmm. have a special segment on Claude Jacobs. You put that story together so nicely to honor him. What did you learn the most no, about him? No, everybody who's ever, he's touched so many lives, but everyone he's ever been close to says that he was just overly giving, overly kind. And I think that's a perfect example of the people here in Victoria in general. Uh, so important. Thank you. Good job on that. Thank you. Jeff. Coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, Eli Lilly plans to cut insulin prices to $35. On February 2nd, 2023, at approximately 4.10 p.m., officers of the Victoria Police Department responded to a bank robbery at 7001 Northeast Sacklands Parkway, a Prosperity Bank. The suspect was described as a black male, about 5'9", weighing 200 pounds. He was wearing a black hoodie, blue jeans, and tennis shoes. If you have any information about this robbery, call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 572-4200. All tips are anonymous. If you give information that leads to arrest or indictment, you could earn a cash reward. Texas Glass and Tinning, your local experts in auto glass replacements, is now offering recalibrations for your windshield replacements to get you back on the road safely. Texas Glass and Tinning has master auto technicians with over 20 years experience offering you prompt and exceptional service, insured, and servicing the Golden Crescent and surrounding areas. If it's glass, it's Texas Glass, Texas Glass and Tinting. For months we've been saying that Fred Loya can save you more money on your car insurance. But just how much more? In recent months, people who switch from Geico and Progressive to Fred Loya Insurance have saved over $1,500 a year. State Farm customers who switched to Fred Loya saved over $1,600 a year. All state customers saved over $1,100 a year. That's a combined savings of over $240,000 a year. So start paying less. Call or visit FredLoya.com. If you don't call, you don't save. When our law firm takes your case, it becomes part of our world. Everyone at the firm works together as a team to get the job done. We work with each other. We go to trial together. We're the ones that wake up in the middle of the night thinking about what to do next on a case. That's our job. That's what we're here for. We help each other on cases, and that's why we get the results that we do. We are members of this community, and when a member of this community trusts us with their case, we take that trust very seriously. The world's oldest animals. Next in some edition, the 512-year-old shark, the 190-year-old tortoise. This dog is the equivalent of 270 human years. And you won't believe how old this llama is. He's amazing. He's still king. Then, the Alec Murdoch double murder trial. What happened when the jurors visited the dog kennel crime scene? Watch the next in some edition.
taking a look at your stocks, the Dow gaining 5 points, the S&P down 19 points, and the Nasdaq loses 77 points. Oil up 64 cents, closing at $77.69 a barrel. Pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly is cutting the price of its insulin products. The CEO announced it was capping the out-of-pocket cost of life-saving drug at $35. As of May 1st, they are also reducing the least, the least price of its non-branded insulin to $25. Right now, it's listed at $82. Eli Lilly CEO made the announcement today. So this is a culmination of about seven years of work we've been doing to reduce uh, the price of our insulins, uh, launching our own a generic to our own uh, best-selling brand. But with the change last year in the Medicare Part D benefit, the senior benefit, to $35, we think that should be the new standard in America. And so while we uh, could wait for Congress to act or the healthcare system in general uh, to apply that standard, we're just applying it ourselves. Lilly's going to buy down all of our customers' out-of-pocket cost to $35 at the pharmacy counter automatically. The American Diabetes Association says the average price of insulin nearly tripled between 2002 and 2013. Demand has increased as diabetes becomes the fastest growing chronic disease in the world. The CDC reports more than 37 million Americans, adults in the U.S. are diabetic. Americans are about to receive less money to buy food. More than 42 million Americans receive help from SNAP. Food stamp recipients are set to start receiving $90 less per month. For three years now, people who received SNAP benefits received extra funds for food as part of the pandemic hunger relief program. Congress voted to end those pandemic emergency allotments. Now they're officially ending this month in 32 states. The experts say some large families could see their benefit cut. Cut as much as $250. Thank you. <laughs> it happens to all of us. It's all right. Well, stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast when we come back. Plus, there's a new executive director at the Children's Discovery Museum of the Golden Crescent. Join us at First United Methodist Church Sunday mornings at 830 on KAVU-TV. But if you're looking for a place to worship in person, we'd love to have you join us here at 8.30 and 10.40 in our sanctuary or at 11 o'clock with Pastor Amanda in our Ignite Contemporary Service. As society gets more and more back to normal, we hope that you'll join us for worship. We were made to worship in community. We pray together, sing together, share in Holy Communion together. Won't you come be the church with us at First United Methodist Church? Are you ready to stop letting big business take your customers away? Phase 3 Digital is your number one digital marketing resource to keep your customers shopping with you. With an office right here in the crossroads and a team of support across the nation, we can help you wherever your business is in the online journey. From building a site to developing e-commerce capabilities to growing your customer base, we will drive results. It is time to take the next step in growing your business with Phase 3 Digital. Are you ready to take your customers back? Give us a call or visit us online to get started. Tonight, the toxic waste removed from the train derailment. Where's it headed? Plus, the West Coast digs out and braces for more snow and heavy rain. More Americans turn to the most watched program on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. A motorcycle repair fail. When I got home, I called him. Hey, this bike is messing up. Then another visit to the shop. It just died. When did you bring the bike back to Mr. Harder? Same day. And the mechanic. When did you give him additional money? When I picked up the bike. Kickstarts a controversy. I made him sign a contract saying, We are done with this bike. Sign off as is, no warranties. Next, Judge Judy. Movies are dreams that you never forget. It's the most magical place in the world. You stop making movies. It'll break your mother's heart. This is larger than any of us. We know who killed Gloria. You think this is our guy? Prove it. There it is. Felony assault and domestic violence. Did you kill Gloria Nunmuck? I'd like you to leave now. 
There's a new executive director at the helm of the Children's Discovery Museum of the Golden Crescent. Brooke Jackson previously served as an educator. She says she looks forward to expressing more of her creativity in her new role as director of the museum. And I'm so excited to bring that experience to the museum as we look for uh, ways to engage the community and get more involvement with children and families at the museum. On Thursday, the museum will feature Dr. Seuss as part of the Read Across America Day spring break camp right around the corner. This year, the theme is all about space. Mm. And with that, well, we will go to the weather with meteorologist Howie Gordon. Howie? Thanks, Karina. Okay, so moisture moving in again tonight. That's right. Looking at some areas of fog, visibility getting taken down a quarter of a mile or less in some spots. But you see some areas not being affected as much. A little bit of wind can help scour out some of this fog, but you see some locations really taking a nosedive with visibility. So this evening into the 70s, all right, dropping down to 69 degrees, mostly cloudy, winds gusting to about 20 miles per hour. Again, looking at that fog. And then for tomorrow, 84 degrees, breezy, but hey, 84 degrees that boundary then is headed our way and what's that going to do it's going to knock our temperatures down clear out our skies look at that though so friday up to 70 that's not too bad then we start to warm pretty much the rest of the week james karina all right howie thank you so much and thank you for being with us remember we're always on at crossroads today plus we hope to see you back here tonight for 25 news now at 6 world news tonight with david Muir is up next